This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. So we're continuing working with a CAD survey, and we're going to be linking the AutoCAD into Revit. We've done a little bit of prep work with that AutoCAD file before we're going to bring it into Revit, and now we're going to see exactly what is the process in getting AutoCAD into Revit properly. Okay, so you can see here's the overall workflow, and let's just do this. So back to Revit, we're going to open up where we left off. So let's just go open. We last were in Revit 0301, so let's just open that one up, and that is a Revit project file, an RVT, and we'll do our save as. This is 0402, and it's still the Revit site file that we're working on. And this is just the starting point, so I'm going to call this begin. Options, just the one backup, great. And then I'll do another save after this. And we'll call this one complete. Good, so now we can get working. Okay, so next thing that we're going to be doing here, let's just put a little project note in. Three, we're going to be linking CAD site. So let's go to our sea level floor plan and we're going to go to insert. So the first thing that we have to remember is always link. So let's just click on link and let's find the file, but just a single click, not a double click. So we'll go with 3D to start and then we'll discuss some of the settings here that we need to talk about. Current view only is unchecked for 3D, is checked for 2D. That's a general best practice rule, whatever you want to call it. And let's discuss it in the context of our file. We're starting with the 3D one. Why are we calling it 3D? Because it has elevation. Each contour is at a different elevation. Therefore, yes, it would be considered 3D. If it had solids, if it had meshes, etc., on and on and on, that's all 3D. Don't check this right here, current view only. If it's 2D, check it, and we'll discuss why in a minute. Okay, so next thing that we're looking at, units must be accurate. So Remember when we made the files, we just did a quick measurement to see what units we were using in AutoCAD. We discovered it was actually decimal feet. So one unit in AutoCAD said, I'm one unit, I'm one foot, as opposed to one unit is one inch or one unit is one meter. So let's just click on feet. So we're saying this was done in feet. Positioning. This should be auto origin to origin. We went to great pains in order to make our origins line up. So Let's make it auto origin to origin. So that's this right here, origin to origin. Okay, once we've done those things, everything else is largely cosmetic. For instance, the layers you bring in, you can specify the ones that you wanna bring in, but hopefully you've done a little bit of that work beforehand and you can just bring in all the layers in. The colors, you can preserve them, which means green will be green. If you choose invert, green will turn red, that type of thing. If you go black and white, then they'll just go black. So all the lines will be black no matter what. So we're just going to preserve the colors. They'll be green. That's fine. Then we say open. Notice we get a warning. Don't turn the warning off. Always read these warnings. It's telling us that none of the created elements are visible. So they're there. They're in the project, but they're not visible in floor plan C level. You may want to check the active view, the parameters, as well as other views and so on. That's fine. Let's just go to our south elevation. Remember the height that that was at? 200 feet above sea level. So when it brought it in, we brought it in on the sea level. We want it there at sea level. That's zero. That's sea level. Now, our top of foundation wall, what was that going to be? Well, we knew that that was 200 feet. That was specified to us. So we're going to hit enter after we adjust that level height. And now you can see that that's just above our grade, which looks about right. Let's just click on this reference plane. I'm just going to unpin it and stretch that up while I'm here in this view. That way you'll be able to see it up in that level. And if I go to the west view, it'll be the same idea. Click on that reference plane and just drag that up. These reference planes are defining the origin, which is quite important. Let's go to that top of foundation wall view. So I'm just in the floor plan top of foundation wall. Let's link in the CAD. 
and let's go to 2D. And we're going to follow those same rules here. So this is 2D, so current view only. Colors, so we're just going to preserve them. The import units, their feet, it was the same as the other one. Notice the positioning, it switched it back to auto center to center. Let's put it auto origin to origin. Let's say open, and away it goes. So it looks like everything here is right. It's being imported properly, our zero zeros are lining up, and that was the work that we did beforehand. What if I were to go into a south elevation? Can you see those blue lines, those red lines? What if I were to go and click on the default 3D view? Can you see those blue lines, the property line? No. And we want it like that. So current view only means this CAD file is linked just into this view. It is not in any other view, south, north, 3D, whatever. It's just in this view. Even if we were to copy the view without detailing, it wouldn't show up. So this is something which you do when it's a 2D. Okay, so the number five thing that we were going to do here were the levels, setting the north, and then also the location. Now, we already did the levels. We wanted to do that right away just so we could make sense of it. We've set the top of foundation level up appropriately. What about the north? Remember when we made the AutoCAD file, we measured this distance right here. And I mean, you can even do that right here in Revit. If I go to Annotate and then I go to Angular, I could just measure that. And we've confirmed that that's 15 degrees. Now, that's all well and good, but the problem is that's not our project north. And if you go into the settings for this view that we're in, this is the top of foundation wall. The orientation, it's set to project north, so this is not right. So here's what we have to do. We're going to click on this file. Now, both of these are pinned, so we're going to unpin them. We're going to rotate them. And we're just going to move that little center pivot point correctly. And then we can either type in the angle that we want to rotate them, or we can just do a visual and rotate that up. Okay, so I did the contours first. Now I'm going to click on this one. This is the property line and building line. And let's rotate that. So now we're going to pin those again. Our north has been set up, but what if I go into my site plan? It's not right as far as true north. So let's do that right here in the site plan. We'll go into the properties and we'll go into orientation true north. And we just need to do one simple thing, and that is to click on that project base point, go to angle to true north. You'd be inclined just to type in 15. Problem is it rotates at sometimes not the expected way. So if I were to just say negative 15, then it does it the right way. Sometimes it's just a trial and error thing. You just need to look at it and see, oh yeah, that looks right. Okay, once you get that set up, it's just a matter of pulling these elevation markers so they're just nice and outside of your, just windowing them and pulling them outside of my building. But now you can see that if I go to top of foundation wall, that's set to project north. If I were to switch that to true north and then apply, it would angle that over. Okay, last thing we need to do is the location. All right, so how do we do that? Well, if we go to manage and we're just going to go to location, that's right here, project location. And then what we can do is we can pick from a location. It's going to put that zero point at a point on Earth. This is important because if you're going to do any kind of shadow studies or anything like that, maybe energy studies, this is going to really come into play. So if I just type in Toronto, let's just go with that. So we are going to be in Toronto. But you could actually go down and specify an exact location, let's say 30 Young Street, Toronto. And we'll say OK to that. OK, so there it is. So our CAD survey has been brought in. Our origins have all been set up. Our norths have all been set up, which do affect the shadows as well. And on top of that, our project location has been set up in our Revit site file. OK, so we still have to put some actual site onto this, but so far our setup is really coming along well. So let's just go to View, Close Hidden Windows, and let's just save what we've done, and then we can close that down.